Hi, welcome to my channel Rocio Chávez Ciencia de Datos. In this video, I will talk to you about the graphical interpretation of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. The topics to be discussed today are some general concepts about the technique called eigen decomposition, which is used to obtain the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a matrix. We will see how they are graphed, what they represent, how to determine if a given vector is an eigenvector of a matrix, how many eigenvalues and eigenvectors a matrix has. In addition, we will understand the concept of change of basis and know what is special about the eigenvectors of a symmetric matrix compared to those belonging to a non-symmetric matrix. As I mentioned in the previous video, the technique called eigen decomposition is widely used in various fields such as physics, data science, and artificial intelligence. It applies only to square matrices and consists of finding a set of scalars called eigenvalues or characteristic values and eigenvectors or characteristic vectors, so that the original matrix can be represented as a linear combination of these. This transformation helps us to understand the characteristics of a system, which allows us, among other things, to carry out its analysis with a smaller amount of data than we originally have, reducing the necessary resources and processing times. As we can see in this formula, the eigenvalue tells us how much the length of the eigenvector changes when it is multiplied by a matrix. If you are interested in understanding the mathematics behind this technique, I invite you to watch a video called Eigenvalues and Eigenvectors Mathematical Explanation on my YouTube channel. In order to cover all the topics I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we will look at two examples. The first one is a non-symmetric matrix, that is, the values above and below its main diagonal are different. Since this matrix is 2 by 2 in size, we have two eigenvalues and two eigenvectors. The eigenvalues are lambda 1 equal to 4 and lambda 2 equal to minus 3. Their corresponding eigenvectors are V1, whose elements are 1 on the x axis and 1 on the y axis, and V2, whose elements are minus 2 and 5. If we multiply lambda 1 by v1, we get the vector 4, 4. And if we multiply lambda 2 by v2, we get the vector 6 minus 15. Let's see all this information on the Cartesian plane. In linear algebra, all vectors start from the origin. So the elements of both the matrix and the eigenvectors to start from the same point. Here we have the vectors corresponding to the elements contained in matrix A, which reach the coordinates 2, 5 and 2, minus 1. We also locate the eigenvectors, which as we had seen, reach the coordinates 1, 1 and minus 2, 5. To graph the effect of the eigenvalues on their respective eigenvectors, we locate the vector obtained by multiplying lambda 1 by v1, which is 4, 4, marked here with a dotted green line, and the vector obtained by multiplying lambda 2 by v2, which is 6 minus 15, indicated here with a dotted purple line. If we draw some lines over the vectors that form the matrix and fill the space with lines parallel to them and equidistant from each other, as seen in this image, we can see the effect that the matrix has on the Cartesian plane, whose unit vectors are i hat and j hat. This means that a matrix is a linear transformation of a space, that is, we obtain a new basis that has its origin at 0, 0, but whose unit vectors have been transformed, so that the first vector of the matrix becomes i hat, transformed, 
and the second vector of the matrix becomes j hat transform. We can see how rotation and scaling occur. The direction of rotation is given by the eigenvectors and the scaling is given by the eigenvalues. If we use the unit vectors belonging to the transformation, we can see how the green dashed arrow reaches the coordinate 1, 1, corresponding to V1, but now in the new space, and how the purple dashed arrow reaches the coordinate minus 2, 5, corresponding to V2, also in the new space. Let's see what the eigenvectors of the same matrix scale by half are, and what relation they have with the eigenvectors of the original matrix. I'm going to multiply the matrix by the scalar 0 0.5. We obtain its eigenvalues and eigenvectors and place them on the plane. If we compare the eigenvectors of both matrices on the graph, we can see that they have the same direction. Another way to know if a vector is an eigenvector of a matrix or not is to carry out the multiplication of the matrix by the vector in question. If the result is a vector whose direction is different, is not a characteristic vector of the matrix. If the resulting vector has the same direction as in this example, then it is an eigenvector. If we apply this same criterion to one of the eigenvectors obtained from the matrix that we multiplied by 0 0.5, we can see that it is indeed an eigenvector of the original matrix. I take this example to tell you that all vectors that have the same direction are eigenvectors of the matrix A. That is, not only there are n eigenvectors of an n by n matrix, but all vectors that are on the straight line formed by the origin and each of the eigenvectors are eigenvectors of the matrix. Now, what value does the eigenvalue of a new eigenvector have? If we factorize a new eigenvector, we can see that the eigenvalue does not change. It remains minus 3. Let's quickly see an example with a symmetric matrix. Here we have its eigenvalues and eigenvectors. We place them on the Cartesian plane at the first glance we can see that their eigenvectors are orthogonal, that is, they are perpendicular. To corroborate whether the eigenvectors are indeed orthogonal, we can calculate their dot product and see if it is equal to zero. And we see that it is indeed equal to zero. Let's continue analyzing graphically the eigenvectors of the symmetric matrix. We draw the new axis and some lines parallel to this. What I want to show you here is that the programs with which we obtain the eigenvectors and eigenvalues often give us different signs. That is, if we obtain them with our language and with Python, the signs are likely not to be the same. However, as we can see here, this does not affect the analysis of the matrix. Finally, we have here the change of phases due to matrix A on the Cartesian plane, and the new basis without the Cartesian plane.